Hello my friends. In previous video I showed how to construct a drum base and in this video I'm going to show you how to put the drum head onto the base. This is a buffalo rawhide. It measures 5 foot by 9 foot and I'm using this to make the drum head for a 30 inch powwow drum and I have it laid out here on the shoulder or neck area which is the thicker part of the hide and I'll get one cut here and then we'll fit uh, one for the other side I'm going to cut this or lay out the cut line I want a three inch overhang and I have here a block that is cut at three inches and this is the best way that I found to draw the lines around this and you hold this Also, the carpenter pencil seems to write the best on here. You can use a Sharpie, but that leaves a permanent mark. When you're pressing on here, you can see this will uh, seesaw and keep the line exactly at the three inches. The hide in the neck or shoulder area is nearly a quarter inch thick. This is nearly impossible for me to cut with my shears, at least in its dry state. So I'm using a scroll saw to cut this out. I've taken a piece of rawhide that was between the two discs piece of scrap and I'm cutting the lacing and I soak this and that's allowing me to use these shears and I'm cutting the strips a half inch to three quarter inch you can see how thick some of this is the thicker area you can narrow it down to a half inch and where it gets thinner you open it up you have to kind of gauge the thickness to try to make it a uniform strength then as I went around the circle in the corner you just pull on it and it'll straighten out like this so I don't have a tight radius this one's too tight that's going to have to be the corner will have to be removed on that you can see how thick this is. Here's that one scrap. It made over 30 feet of lace. Now this is pliable right now. Here I made a modification to the base to the frame and what I did is I drilled a second breather hole and I did that on all the four corners and the reason for that is to run a strap through to suspend the drum in its stand. Um, a lot of people are using eye bolts and that just bothered me that I would be putting this uh, 
metal bolt that will stick out through into the frame. So this will be uh, a lot more natural using a, a strap of rawhide and uh, um, a little more uh, practical. It'll allow more air and also this will give me handles for carrying. To lay out where you're going to punch the holes, what I do is I fold this in half and I use a pencil, the Sharpie won't write on wet, and I mark both of these folds on the ends. Then I take this, fold these two marks together, then I mark it again. Okay, now I take <clears throat> the first two, first mark and the last mark, I'll make those join each other. Then I mark it again. And once I get them close, then I can just measure between and mark center. And that will give me 16 marks. After you have layout lines marked all the way around, then you want to punch holes and I'm using a block. This is three quarter by three quarter as a quick guide. Okay, and I'm backing this up with a cutting board. And I'll be putting two holes but I'm going to go around one complete time with a single hole. Okay, once you have the holes punched all the way around, you want to double the holes. So I have here a guide. This is three quarter inch wide. That's given me about a three quarter inch to the edge. And we go all the way around, <clears throat> making sure that we punch a hole to the same side. After you have all the holes punched, then you want to lay the bottom one with the hair side down. And then you want to lay the second one over top, and then this time the hair side up. Now we want to line the holes with each other. In the pattern I'm setting the holes to the middle of these two, just so that the pattern breaks even. Okay, and then we want to make equal distance all the way around, which it may be off slightly because when you wet the rawhide, it will expand possibly at different amounts, but it looks pretty close. And we want to match this one with the one that's on the bottom. And of course, the hair side up. And it's easy to tell the hair side is real smooth. And these holes line up directly over top the other ones. Okay, we're ready to begin lacing. And I pre-cut all the lace, there's about 40 feet. I had it soaked and then to keep it from drying out, I put it in a Ziploc.
right here. And you see the beginning end? I flared it out kind of like a snake head. And the reason for that is I can cut in here and that is going to make my beginning knot. When I begin to lace this, I don't want to be pulling the skin off of the frame. So I'm going to take some paracord and I'm going to run some temporary ties that are going to be not under a lot of pressure. And this will be just to be able to hold it from sliding. Right there you see temporary tie. Now I'm going to start lacing with the rawhide from the other side. And you see right here I cut into this. My estimation for how much lace is approximately 30 feet. And like I said, I have about 40 feet here. Okay, now what we're going to do, this one's directly underneath. We're going to do every other one. Go all the way around and then on the second time we're going to do the in between and it will crisscross these ties. When you're lacing this, make sure that you are consistent with um, how you uh, throw the line into the holes. Here I'm coming from the outside in. And what that will do is leave this center section not covered. So if you can remember the way you're doing it. You don't want to put much tension on this until you have the entire drum laced up. Then you'll go around and snug it up little by little. We came all the way around. This is the first time. And then we're coming up to where we started. And we're going to have to cut this and start a second one. Okay, I'm going to pull the slack out. Okay, I'm going to cut this now. And I'm going to leave enough that I can pull on it and also be able to tie it off. Okay, now we went around twice. Now this time we're going to tighten everything. Now as this is drying, I like to hold these down. And I found the best way to do that is to get an ace bandage and wrap around those and then maybe even put some spacers here so it's in contact with the drum frame. 
If not, it's going to leave these peaks standing up and they'll be real hard. But if they're tucked down, now's the time to do it. It'll make a much nicer finish. On the smaller hand drums, this works great. And it should work on this. Um, the only issue is the length of this is about five feet. And uh, the circumference of the drum here is approximately uh, eight foot. So we're going to go around as far as we can and then splice in a second one. Okay, then what I'll do is I'll make sure that these are all pushed down. If I have to, I'll put spacers to hold them. And we'll do that to the bottom also. There we have tension. That should hold everything down pretty good. Now we just need to let it dry. I placed scrap blocks in between. And I have met a diagonal so it fits in between these V's and that's holding it pretty close and when it dries it should be fairly snug. Here you can see I've taken the strapping and the blocks off and if you look real close it held it down pretty tight and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. This has been uh, drying for about 24 hours and it's still wet. So still pliable. Overall, it turned out really nice. In the frame, it's made to be adjustable. Uh, it can come apart and the height of the drum can be set at two inch increments and if need be new posts can be made so that it could be for a standing height most drummers like to set i hope you enjoyed this video very much thanks for watching my friends bye bye